Hello my friends, welcome back. We're going to talk about dynamics today, particularly equations of motion with normal and tangential components. Okay? So we're talking about we're talking about this, right? If I have a weight going around a circle or around a corner, a uh, something with constant curvature there, radius of curvature, what is the acceleration on the ball? Okay? Now, in this case, the ball is moving at constant velocity. I'm not speeding up, not slowing down, right? So what's acting on the ball, okay? You'll remember that, that this is happening, okay? So as that ball swings around my head, it's tied to a rope here. There's the ball. Um, as it swings around a path, okay, something like that. That's a pretty good circle. But there's two kinds of acceleration here on the ball. Number one is this guy. Assuming that this is the direction of travel, right? There's the direction of travel. And this guy is tangential to the path. We would call that AT. Now, if you have a problem that just gives you the acceleration of an object going around a path, that acceleration will be your tangential acceleration. Okay? But it also has one more acceleration, and that is this guy. Okay? We would call that AN for normal. Now, it's also called centripetal or centripetal, if you're from England. Um, that's probably wrong, but uh, you have this normal going towards the center. Now, this has really blows students' minds. Like, now wait a minute. If I'm twirling this around, I can feel it pulling this way on my hand, away from me, right? Why is the acceleration going towards the middle? That doesn't make any sense. But think about the ball. The ball wants to fly off, doesn't it? Choo, right? But that force that I can feel in the string as I'm swinging it, the, the, the string is tight, right? The thing that makes that string tight is that acceleration. So think about if you were the ball, what would you feel? If you were the ball swinging around, what would you feel? You would feel that acceleration or that force that's pulling you towards the middle of the circle, that tension in the string, that's what you would feel. That's due to that centripetal acceleration a in and that's why it goes towards the middle think about the reason it goes to the middle is the free body is of the object okay it's just like the earth going around the sun right what is that normal force well that's that gravitational pull towards the middle right so that acceleration normal is in that direction towards the sun okay so think about the free body diagram and uh, maybe that'll make sense to you so we know that acceleration has two components, and if we wanted to, we could find the resultant, right, acceleration by doing, you know, a, squ a normal squared plus tangential squared, square root, we could find this. We've talked about that before um, in some previous videos, but we're going to talk about it again when we talk about equations of motion uh, for bodies, okay? Okay, so now that's out of the way. Let's work this little problem over here. I did not erase very good, okay? So we have a box on a conveyor. Maybe this is like your order leaving the Amazon shipping center here. And it's coming around a corner here of some radius of curvature rho, okay? And we know that, what do we know? We know we have AT for tangential and we have AN. And we know that AN, that normal acceleration we have an equation for that guy, and it's v squared over rho. So the velocity of the object divide, divided by rho. So for this box going around this corner, it says it has a mass of 5 kilograms. Okay, so here's the box. What does the box weigh? 5 kilograms, okay. So have 5 kilograms uh, times 9.81, right? That'll give it to me in newtons, right? What is that? 5 times 9.81 equals 49.05. I knew that. 49.05 newtons. Okay. What else is going on in the box? Well, there's a normal force down here. I think it's going to be 49.05. And then there's two things going on here. Number one is this guy, which is a friction force, right? There is some friction force that is uh, preventing the box from like flying off the conveyor this way, right? The, 
friction between the conveyor and the box. And they give us some uh, things down here for that. So I might be able to calculate that. Uh, and then there's this force here, right? That's trying to push the box off and that's that centripetal force, okay? So let's see if we can do this. So it has a mass of five kilograms. It travels down the conveyor at eight meters per second. So if it's traveling down the conveyor at eight meters per second, what is its tangential acceleration? Get rid of that ball. Okay, what is the tangential acceleration? Well, it's zero. If it's traveling at a constant velocity, that means it doesn't have any acceleration. So that component there of the acceleration uh, is zero. Okay, so it only has a component here towards the center, which is that A normal, okay? Find the smallest radius of curvature without slipping, and then they give us mu sub s and mu sub k. Well, that's tricky, right? I don't know, the box is moving. Do I use kinetic or do I use static? They give you both and you have to decide which one to use. Well, the box is moving, but think about sliding, okay? This means that the box is constantly sliding. Is it? No. We are gonna use static uh, coefficient of friction because we don't want the box to slide, right? Once the box starts sliding, then off the conveyor it goes. So this is the correct one to select, not that one, okay? This is for constant sliding. You push your couch, once you get it moving, that's kinetic friction, right? But we're worried about just getting it to start sliding. So we're gonna use this guy, okay? So the friction we're gonna use is 0.7. And since we're talking about the, the, on the brink of slipping, the absolute brink of slipping, then we can use the fun friction equation, right? Which is mu times n, okay? Uh, and that is uh, 0.7 times the normal force, which is 49.05 newtons, okay? So the force is times 0.7 equals 34.34, okay? So 34.34 newtons, okay? That's all that box can take without slipping, right? That is the force that it's gonna take, that's the force here that it's gonna take to make that box slip, okay? Now since the box is moving, what do we know about something moving? How do we calculate the force on something that's moving? What's generating that force that's making it wanna fly off? That guy right there, okay? So. The force in the, in the string, right, is I'm twirling the string. What's making the force in the string is that normal acceleration is what's making that tension. It's what's going to create that guy right there, okay? So that guy is going to be what? I don't know. How about this? M-A, right? Mass times acceleration, okay? So the force here, we already know the force. We know the most it can take before it starts to slide equals ma, okay? Do we know m? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, it's, uh, it's five kilograms, isn't it? So 34.34 newtons is equal to five kilograms times a. And what is the acceleration? Again, the normal acceleration, I mean, the tangential acceleration is zero, so all we have is the normal acceleration, which is v squared over rho and we know V, don't we? It's uh, eight meters per second. So eight squared over rho. There you go. So let's see here. Uh, can we do that? Five times, what's eight squared? 64? 64 equals 320. So 320 is equal to 34.34 rho. And so rho is equal to, here we go, let's see, 320 divided by 34.34 equals 9.32 meters, okay? And so the radius of curvature would have to be 9.32 meters. If it's anything smaller than that, the box is gonna slide off, okay? So it has to be at least 9.32 meters. Okay, I hope this was helpful. We'll do a, we'll do a couple more of these.
uh, in the next video here just to make sure that uh, we understand this tangential and normal acceleration around the corner. Okay, hope that helps.